welcome to Nativity of Our Lord Parish. Please stand as we celebrate Palm Sunday of the Passion of Our Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately upon entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, what, why are you doing this, reply, the master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered him just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. What a change from last year, huh? But God is always working, and he's always working in and through his people and in and through the world. One of the things that I couldn't help but notice as I read through today's Gospel, first Gospel reading, is the way in which Jesus had instructed his disciples to go and do things. How he told them to go find a colt to untie it. And the other many things that were went along with this gospel passage. And how they prepared a place for him. Christ is always asking us. And how are we listening to the way in which he asks us to prepare things for him. As we enter into this holy week this greatest of all weeks, may we learn to open ourselves up to prepare his life and what he has prepared for us into our lives and to those that we encounter. And let us go forth in peace. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my cheek, I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. And since our gospel is so long, please be seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not, not during the festival, festival for, for fear, fear that there, there may be riot among, among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why, Why was this, this there then this waste of perfumed oil? It, it could have been sold for more than 100 300 days' wages and money, and money given, given to the poor. poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Paschal Lamb, his disciples said to him, 
Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me in the, into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you. I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your face shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. His betrayer arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. 
arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth around his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard, we heard him say, I will destroy, destroy this temple made, made with hands, and, and within, within three, three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, and he said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too, you too were, were with, with the Nazarene, Nazarene Jesus. Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This, this man, man is, is one, one of them. them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you, you are, are one of them, them for, for you too are, are Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held the council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he was used to release one, them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew 
that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify, Crucify him. him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify, Crucify him. him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, Hail King, King of the, the Jews. Jews and kept striking his head with the reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews, with him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot, cannot save, save himself. himself. Let, Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come, come down, down now from the cross, that, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabathani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is, he is calling, calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes, down, comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, 
who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of a rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In the history of our church, there are some serious discussions about Jesus and, and who is this man? Was he divine or was he human? We think he was human and God gave him some really great powers. The other group said, no, he's divine and he just kind of looked like us. But our belief is he was divine and human. He had both. And our passion today shows us both sides of Jesus. His humanity and his divinity. He's human. He's a Jew. What are we going to do? It's Passover. Let's get ready and celebrate Passover. That's what we do. Very human. But the story has some little things in it, like he sends people and he knows who's going to be there to meet them. It has to be from his divinity. Also, if we remember at the Transfiguration, he was speaking with Moses and Elijah and what were they talking about? Talking about his death. He knows now, as he goes to celebrate the Passover, that his death is near, very near. So he celebrates, but he knows how near it is. And he said, I said some things that didn't make sense to most people like you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. So he cleared that up. He knew the time was very short. Took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them and said, take it, this is my body. And then took the cup, gave it to them, they all drank from it said, this is the blood of my covenant, which will be shed for many. That cleared that up. And after dinner, they all went to pray, which was customary for them. But while he was praying, he prayed, Father, all things are possible to you, Take this cup away from me, not what I will, but you will. Then he came out to see everybody was sleeping, not praying. And he went back to pray. And what did he say? Said the same thing. Take this cup away from me, not my will, but your will. He knew the time was at an end. And after that, the rest of the story becomes Jesus is in his humanity. 
He's arrested, beaten, tortured, mocked, spit upon. And finally he said, why don't you take this piece of wood and tear it up the hill and we'll crucify you on it. That was human, very human. All of that story, that end of that story is human. Next week, we will see the complete other side when we see his divinity. Well, what do we get out of that passion today? During his lifetime, he only taught us one prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your will be done. And what does he pray as he knows he's going to die? Not my will, but your will. Not my will, but your will. Let's take that message with us this week. God bless. Let's rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let's come before our merciful God with humble hearts and offer these petitions. For Pope Francis and the leaders of the church, may the Lord bless their efforts to spread the gospel to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawyers and judges, may God's just judgment inform them in seeking truth, justice, and dignified treatment for all who come before them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us facing a crisis in faith, find renewed hope in the scriptures, rites, and prayers of Holy Week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those near death, may they embrace the cross of Jesus and rise again to see God's face in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this assembly, may we celebrate this Holy Week with renewed faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kathy McGuire, who we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause to add your own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in our vocation in prayer. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes souls needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, we humbly ask you to hear the prayers we offer you this day through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that though, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, 
Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And we'll be using the first Eucharistic prayer this evening. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, though they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Florence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, is Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And for Holy Communion, we ask that those that would like to receive communion on the, on the tongue to please come at the end of my line and then uh, we'll give you communion. And if you can remember to hold your hand flat and down a little bit, it makes it a lot easier for us to put Jesus into your hand and so without us touching him.
Prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
nourished with these sacred gifts, we be humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements. Uh, there will be a Divine Mercy Novena, which begins on Good Friday. Uh, there are pamphlets that will be available. Uh, Barbarado will be handing them out in the back of church following uh, ma the Mass. They'll also be available in the parish office. And we'll also be having a Divine Mercy Sunday, which is at 11, uh, on April 11th, and that will begin at 3 o'clock. It will be adoration and, and some reflections for an hour, and confessions will be available. Just a reminder uh, to parishioners and guests and visitors, uh, you're asked to call or email the parish office to sign up for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Vigil Mass. Uh, more information is in the bulletin. We still, we only, we have 87 people signed up for Thursday, 89 people for Friday, and uh, 69 people for the Easter Vigil on Saturday. Holy Thursday, the Holy Thursday collection is uh, normally being, uh, being been a collection for the food pantry. This year will be a little different. We will be taking a monetary collection for the food pantry in place of bringing food items to Mass. And lastly, having been up for the Chrism Mass, we celebrate the Chrism Mass. The Chrism Mass is normally celebrated on uh, Holy Thursday. But because of the size of our diocese in the area of it, we celebrated, uh, celebrated it this two, last Tuesday. And so the bishop blessed the oils and stuff up there. And it was a good time for the priests to get together. We haven't been together for a year. And the bishop was uh, talking to us. And uh, the priests were talking amongst themselves and with the bishop and discussing things. And you know, with people uh, uh, with this pandemic that is going on and it continues to go on, we're kind of in a gray area right now. We don't know what's going to happen, especially with all the vaccinations and things that are taking place. We aren't sure if people are still going to be able to spread that virus. In other words, that vaccination that we receive is for ourselves to help us out so that virus doesn't take as deep a root within us or it protects us from it. They still aren't sure. So we're asked to sit there and just to be mindful of other people, especially those that are coming back to church that haven't been back to church in a long time. They're still fearful of what's taking place. So that's up to each one of us to respect the other people and to remember those people that are still vulnerable, that are still fearful to recognize that we all have to respect the other pe persons. Some of that, of course, is watching the way in which we sing. We're called to sing. But it's also to realize what we're, to keep our masks on, make sure that we stay sanitized. And the many other uh, gifts that we're, we've been now been able to have. It's also reflecting upon what's taking place in other parts of the world and even in our own area because we can look to right to Michigan. We can see the way it's exploding over there. Minnesota opened up to 50%. Now they're closing back down. They're shutting things down again. Rome, once again, the Holy See is not going to be able to have, the Vatican is not going to be able to have services again because they've had to shut down again. Same in Germany and over in England, many other parts of the world. We're hardly out of this yet although we'd like to be, but it's also being mindful and respecting of other people and making sure that we watch out for other people. I believe, thankfully, in our, on our, if I, I went to the, uh, our county website, health department website, and they said almost 35% of the people have received their vaccination, their first vaccine, vaccination, and about 22% or 22 have received their a full vaccination. So that's great. Hopefully we can curb this thing and keep it under control, especially around here. That's higher than our state average and our national average. 
So that's something to be really uh, thankful for. Also, if you've signed up for uh, the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Vigil Mass, we ask that you come about 10 minutes, be here at least about 10 minutes early, because if there's any open spaces and people want to come in, we'll take, we'll take those places. So, okay, be mindful of that. And also for uh, exiting, we ask you to please remember the Conroe Street and the parking lot exit to leave first, to prevent that cross traffic within the aisles and by people. And then after that, after things settle down, then the King Street to go out. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great and holy, holy week, everybody. Thank you. you know what's it?